Dinnington Colliery Band has been at the heart of its local community for over a century. I just know what it's meant to me and what I've gained from it. And I just think it's a shame to not offer that opportunity to other kids. It means the world to some, but now the band is on the verge of extinction. If we played on the main street, they'd just carry on doing what they were doing. They don't seem to be bothered about a brass band in this area now. What Dinnington needs is a saviour. Hooray, you beauties! Enter Sue Perkins. From the moment I was little, music was important because I think it just broadens your horizon, expands your mind. I always think of music having sort of posture. Brass band is strength. Hey, there's a band at Tapa Road. It's your brass band, look what it's come to. Look at the state of it. <laughs> Inspired by her passion for music, Sue's accepted the daunting task of breathing new life into a dying band. Uniting young and old, she'll challenge them to rediscover their fighting spirit, yeah! test their metal alongside the best in the business, at the side of Grand Cup, it will sound really cool, and along the way, try to reignite the British love affair with brass bands. Thank you, Your Royal Highness, you've brought us all together. But this lot... Dinnington! ..can be an explosive bunch. Everything seems perfect, and then it all just explodes. And with its very future at stake, it'll be a tall order to bring Dinnington back from the brink. Knowing what we've done over the years, I don't know how you're going to do it. Kay Brooks, her sister Joan, and daughters Sally, Joanne and Penny are the heartbeat of Dinnington Colliery Band. But with the help of Sue Perkins, Kay's precious band began a remarkable revival. Fancy a blow? Who's not going to come and see that poster that you've done? A host of new talent was recruited and promoted from Joanne's training band along with a new conductor to help realise Sally's ambition of a return to competition. And a new look Dinnington capped its competitive debut with silverware. But for one of its most devoted servants, what should have been the proudest day in the band's history was ruined when the pressure of competition sparked infighting backstage. You're in your blazer and that's not all. Pack it in. Don't backchat me. We might have come third, but to me it was the worst day probably of my banding career because of what happened, what happened with the kids, all the kids getting so upset. That just took all the enjoyment away from me. Um, coming third you know, was nothing, it just didn't matter. Joanne Brooks-Wright has played with Dinnington since she was a schoolgirl. And as the director of the training band, she's passionate about the next generation. It's very easy to create a good winning band. It's not very easy to keep that and still be a good winning band in a year, five years, ten years' time. The only way to do that is to take a step backwards, start at a lower level and grow from within. But now, just two weeks since the band's competition triumph, Sue returns to Yorkshire to find that Joanne is about to quit. Is your heart in it still? I don't know. I don't like the direction the band's taking. Unless you have this, a training band and a constant stream of kids, you're permanently going like this. And the issue is going to be, when we get down there, one of these days, there'll be nobody to keep it going. The majority of the people, they want to just go out winning contests now which is what sort of pulling, it's pulling us apart. So you think your goal's different from Sally's? <sighs> yeah, I do, actually. The problem with what Sally wants is that won't keep Dinnington Band going in the future. Joanne's sister, virtuoso cornet player Sally, is no less devoted, but she has different priorities for the band's future. As a player, I do like to compete. I don't think I could honestly be in a band that never competed. Even if it was only twice a year, it's something to look forward to. You know, if, if I'm in something, I'm in because I want to win it, not because I just want to win and add a few numbers to how many is competing. 
I just feel that. I just, I want Diddy to, to get back to what it was. But for now, the competition career will have to take a back seat as Sue finds herself in the middle of a family rift that puts Dinnington's very survival at risk. Do you think, at the risk of being devil's advocate, that some people in the band want to compete and some people in the band just doing it for a laugh and the two are maybe not gelling? Yeah, I think so. OK. Because for me, looking in on it, the priority should be making good, fun music. Mm. True. Now, how much of good, fun music is being created? No. If they want different things, I can't change what I believe in. <laughs> During Sue's final month with the band, she faces her toughest test yet. Can she reconcile Sally and Joanne's conflicting ambitions? Well done. That was, no, that was the C you played then. That was the low one. Restore morale. There's only your life at risk, it don't matter. Reunite the band around a common goal. You've got to give yourselves a chance to believe you can do it. And leave Dinnington with any hope of a long-term future. I do love them and I'd be very sad if it doesn't flourish. And I don't want to leave it in the same state I found it, or, or, or even worse, which is, you know, a sort of possibility. It's a real shame. It's a real shame. Sue's planning a grand finale to her time in Yorkshire, an event that she hopes will begin to raise morale and fire the band's imagination. I'm going to go in there now and I'm going to tell them my plans for the, for the next few weeks. Um, and basically they're going to be playing with Grimethorpe. Grimethorpe are the premiership. This is like the minnows at Manchester United. It's like they're at Old Trafford. It's like they're supporting you too. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't get any better than that. And, and because it's so great, I'm hoping that one of them, one of them, might crack a smile. In just four weeks' time, Dinnington will share the stage with Grimethorpe Colliery Band, one of the best brass bands in the world. Mm, I can smell the excitement. Well, I think that's a meat pie. At a special concert in Sheffield City Hall. How's tricks with everyone? Yeah. That good. Oh, all right. <laughs> wow, we're flying. That sense of excitement, I tell you, is really percolating outside as well. You can, you can just sense it as you come into the building. So the concert I'd very much like you to do, and I think it's about time, is I'd like you all, Dillington Curry Band, to support Grimethorpe at Sheffield City Hall, uh, where you'll be opening up the second half of the programme and then playing with Grimethorpe uh, at the closer. That's Grimethorpe, the Premiership of Bands. <laughs> I say not the side doing much playing anyway, not with their couple's considering. I like to think it's where you'll be in six months or so. Well, for a band of salad, it's a big deal. Don't, you know, you don't usually get that opportunity. That's an achievement for me. Because I probably haven't got many more years to go. Interesting response there, because the response was as if I'd asked them the question, are you all right with the fact they've run out of pasties at Greg's? And they just go, yeah. So the uh, familiar lonely road to Dinnington stretching out before me, and uh, I've been called back by Joanne, who's taking the initiative, which is brilliant, um, and has uh, basically inveigled me into the hunt for fresh meat for Dinnington. So we're going to go and um, basically do a few workshops and a rallying call around schools in the local area. After a heart-to-heart -heart with Sue, Joanne's agreed to lead the hunt for the next generation. One thing about playing in a band is lots of families do it. So you find mums and dads can learn to play and kids can learn to play as well. We teach you to play and then we've actually got a group called the Dinnington Colliery Training Band, which is also the people of your age or people who are learning to play. So there are some grown-ups in it that are learning. And then hopefully, by this time next year, you could be sort of sitting in a group like this, playing all sorts of tunes that you recognise. Recruiting novice players won't provide a quick fix, but it could be the key to survival and to restoring Joanne's faith in the band's future. Thank you. 
There are three weeks to go before the Grimethorpe gig, and Sue's been pulling out all the stops to produce a packed programme of morale-boosting events on the road to Sheffield City Hall. It's Saturday morning, and the band has been told to pack its bags for a weekend away. On the agenda, a stiff dose of team bonding. It's to be hoped it's the bonding weekend has the effect of super glue in this band because we'll it'll lead to it make it bond. I'm sure it's the best thing, best thing that we can do, I think. Well, it can't do any more damage, can it, really? First up, they're off to a rugby match. I'm excited for that with the thighs. Not the playing, not the event, the thighs and the bodies that will be on pitch, yes. <laughs> the band is crossing the Pennines. The destination is Wigan and a clash of titans. England are playing Australia in a high-profile international and Sue's fixed it for Dinnington to perform the national anthems. Got 25,000 people here, a million people watching at home courtesy of the BBC and 30 nations around the globe tuning in. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. It's a big deal for me, I feel frightened. Got the jacket though, so at least I'm looking good. Ooh, come on then. Today is going to come from the Dinnington Colliery Brass Band and they are conducted by Sue Perkins, the winner of the Maestro competition. She's conducted, uh, uh, we've conducted the proms in the park as well. How different is this atmosphere for you? Uh, this is a uh, yeah, slightly more robust atmosphere than the proms. It's a bit rarefied my blood, but uh, yes, it would be, this is Dinnington and we're all looking forward to delivering the couple of cracking national anthems, hopefully the right ones as well. It is Lithuania versus Angola, isn't it? In, in, indeed it is, and I'm looking forward to hearing those anthems. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. With a captive audience of 25,000 in the stadium and millions more on the edge of their seats around Britain, down under and even back in Dinnington, the band is about to play to the biggest audience it's ever likely to face. Today, I think, above and beyond making some good music, I think we needed it for sort of team spirit, and we've had that in spades today. So, thank you, Your Royal Highness, you've brought us all together. We've got a good bit of British pluck going on now, the team. Thank you. I think we're all right, yeah. Particularly when players come on. It's a great fight on me. It's all about the music for you, is that's what I love about you, it's your commitment to brass. It's brilliant. Excuse me, no, absolutely. It all ends too quickly. Next morning, with their newfound sense of togetherness, not even torrential rain can dampen Dinnington's mood as they're put through their paces on a series of mental and physical challenges. Keep it up, keep it up, oh good. <laughs> It's a long time since this lot had this much fun together. But can they take their renewed sense of self-confidence to where it really matters, into the rehearsal room? Okay. Just going to carry on with the warm-up for now. So this time... Ba, 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 ba. To give Dinnington a fighting chance of holding its own alongside Grimethorpe, Sue set up a series of masterclasses run by members of nearby Foden's, another Premier League brass band. With morale at an all-time high, there's time for one last run-through. 
Sue has agreed to conduct the final piece of the concert at Sheffield City Hall as Grimethorpe and Dinnington join forces to play the notoriously fast and furious William Tell Overture. So this is uh, William Tell and this is the piece you're going to be doing with Grimethorpe. And uh, we're going to show Grimethorpe a thing or two, basically. By the time that comes, they're thinking, my God, oh, I'm going to go for it. Yeah. We're all ready. William Tell is Grimethorpe's iconic party piece. A paying audience of 2,000 will expect to hear it played at their trademark breakneck speed. For Dinnington, and the Cornet section in particular, it's a leap into a different league. I can almost feel the pain. Sue may be delighted, but Sally doesn't share her belief in her own or the band's ability to keep pace with Grimethorpe. If you can't play it, then... I'm not on about any of the lesser players now. I'm on about our ah, so key players, me being the prime one, to be honest with you, because I've got a hell of a lot of work to do to manage to play this. I can play it as slow as you want, can play it my speed all day, but that's not their speed. Why not? You've got, you've got a week and time. I'm not asking you to do the impossible, because I think for you, Sally, that's, not, that's well within the bounds of your capabilities. But the thing is also, the audience can see what time of time I'm beating it at. They're going to look idiotic that's and not me, saying, and you're you. Well, they're not. I'm going to be one that looks idiotic, because I can't play it. You can play it, you just need no, to go home and have a look. You can, you can. No, I can't. Sue. Now we sound like Orville, apparently. No, I can't. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. No. You haven't heard yourselves, and the improvement is extraordinary. And I think you've got to give yourselves a chance to believe you can do it. Because otherwise, what's the point? There's no point saying, oh, we're no good, we're no good. You've just proved you are really good. You've just played two pieces of music better than I've ever heard you play. All I can say, without being the idiotic voice of, of utter belief in the band, is that you have come such an extraordinary way in, since 9 o'clock this morning. You know, why stop there? Why not believe we're going to play with these people, we're going to play well, we're going to play at the tempo that I'm going to set, which we've just done. You've just done it. It's done already. So, uh, William Tell, uh, one of the best known pieces of brass introduction, and it goes at a pace, and I think the faster it goes sometimes, the more exhilarating it is. But, of course, Sally's got an awful lot of the, the sort of cross to bear on that. She's got the bab, ba -da -bab, ba -da -bab, ba -bab, ba -bab, incredibly fast, incredibly crisp. And um, the main worry is that they, she doesn't have the confidence to believe she can go that speed. I know she can. I've left her with that issue. But I don't want to make a compromise. I don't think we need to. I think the whole point of today is not to have a compromise. The whole point of today is feel that the band is good enough to go to Grimethorpe, to play the music, to enjoy the experience. As with everything else, it's a self-esteem issue with it. The issue with um, William Tell is that you need to know the speed to practice it at the correct speed, which is particularly an issue for Sally, who's going to be sat next to some of the best Cornet players in the country and will want to hold her own with them, which she can. 41-year-old Sally Bannon is one of Dinnington's stars. Nothing means more to her than playing in the band. I don't know anything else other than my hobby was brass. You know, so it's something obviously that if you start when you've been doing for 33 years, it's more like a way of life. It's not really then classed as a hobby. Sally's passion and her ability make her an inspiration to younger players, including 12-year-old Alex. I'm not at the standard yet where I can just play the music perfect just in one go. That would be like Sally's standard, because she's like an inspiration, really. Because I want, I want to play like Sally plays. When Sally played William Tell, she's really good at that solo bit. 
Alex has no doubts about her ability, but mastering William Tell will be a tall order for the band and a stern personal test for Sally. There is pressure on the band to be able to play it because irrespective of what, Grimethorpe will play it at their speed, they go on autopilot. Myself, personally, I've got to make sure I'm up to speed and be able to play it for my own personal satisfaction. I do need to get back into practice. With Sally intent on conquering William Tell, just put them in one of them boxes and label it as ties. Her sister Joanne still has her sights set on the band's long-term future. I'd like to see Dinnington Band become successful, but becoming successful through developing. I would like the contest in success, but only if we can grow and become that successful band within the local community. After the success of her school visits, Joanne is planning an open day to entice some more younger players into the fold. I just know what it's meant to me and what I've gained from it. And I just think it's a shame to not offer that opportunity to other kids. But Sue is not so sure about the pulling power of Dinnington HQ. Realistically speaking, would you come to an open day to a building like this, which at best resembles a pre-war outside toilet meets Hobbit's darkroom? So it's time to really invigorate the place. It's time to uh, you know, freshen it up, to make it more inviting to people. I can hear harumphing. And whenever there's harumphing, there's dinner. I think the outside could do with a certain lick of something. Uh, or just a lick, actually. Were you to lick it, it would probably come up nicer, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, we look like we're about to conduct an alien autopsy. <laughs> I think, <laughs> this band room made over. I'm exhausted. Where's the tea? <laughs> Here's Kate. Oh, it couldn't be worse. It's like it's been a landslide. Well, it never dawned on me to be painted outside, did it, you, Kate? No. <laughs> oh, dear. What do you reckon, my darling? Uh, to what, inside and out? I think it's great, both. Do you? You're a little ray of sunshine, you are. I know. I think it's going to be fabulous. We modelled it on your hair and my personality. <laughs> Can't go wrong, then, so can they. <laughs> Despite the cold weather, Joanne soon has a small group of eager new players. Hiya. What have we got here, then? You want to try something? Right, I'll tell you what we'll do, then. Do you two want to come over here? You hold it slightly sideways, yeah? And then that finger on that valve, that one on that one, that one on that one, thumb underneath, and your little finger preferably resting on there if it's long enough to do that. When we produce a note, what we effectively do is we try to bust with his mouth, so we go... Like that. Blow it up. Excellent. So this time, try and do me a note, but try and start it by <coughs> with your tongue. But keep blowing when you've done that. That's it. Lovely. Surrounded by budding talent, Joanne is in her element. The prospect of quitting seems like a distant memory. Keep your cheeks in. She'll be delighted now we've got some recruits. Even if it were only one, she would have been delighted. That was smashing, yeah. Well, th with three new recruits, which is absolutely great, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, they've done really, really well as well. For the, for the first time they've picked an instrument up, they've done really well. Without grassroots bands like Dinnington bringing through the next generation, one of the few forms of quintessentially British music could die out forever. For Sue Perkins, that's simply unthinkable. In 
Inspired by the Dinnington revival, Sue's on a mission to raise the profile of brass bands all over the land. It's not now just about Dinnington. The important thing is to recognise bands all over the country and to make sure that there's money in the pockets of those people who are trying to get brass bands together and keep those, those colliery bands, you know, going. And yet again, Sue's thinking big. On the 9th of November in London, in the mother of all parliaments, there is a cross-party parliamentary brass band group meeting with the Arts Council to discuss funding. And basically, at the moment, the way it stands is that for every £1,000 that goes to opera, one pound goes to brass bands. So that is the situation you are working in. And so what I'm proposing is, is that as many of you would like to, and it's really open to everyone, come to London and do a bit of barracking, a bit of demonstrating, a bit of pushing, a bit of playing, a bit of invading that sacred mile where apparently we're not allowed to demonstrate anymore without getting arrested, and make some noise and see if we can't encourage them to give more money to, to brass bands everywhere. Today, Dinnington. Tomorrow, London. So today, I'm taking the fight all the way to the mother of parliaments. London, it suffered invasion, plague, fire, the blitz, but nothing can prepare it for a coachload from Dinny. Aiming high, Sue's carrying the fight right to the top. It's more of a sort of friendly, benign, brass-based protest. Right. OK, protesting well. There's no money for community British music making, basically. Oh, sorry. There's no money for community British music making. So basically, for every thousand pounds that the Arts Council gives to... Sorry, I'm try, trying to conduct, that's what they're saying now. Um, a thousand pounds goes to opera and these guys get a quid. And this is the only... This is the last form of genuinely British music making that exists. So basically, it's a benign, friendly, non-violent... They can turn nasty, but obviously not with you. We need a permit, don't we? <laughs> Can we finish? Uh, this one. Yeah. They're nearly done. It's nice, though, eh? That's Sally. Give me a good finish, I'm about to be arrested. It's a fair cop. Narrowly avoiding an early finish and a night in custody, the Dinnington campaign takes to the road. It's like the A-team with arthritis. What does it make you feel, the sound? Um, it's deep, deeply and touch my soul. Touches your soul? It touches her soul. After a gruelling day pounding the streets of London, the band retires to the pub for a well-earned pint or three, while Sue's headed to the Houses of Parliament for the day's serious business. I'm looking forward to it. It'd be very interesting to see how it works, or what the sort of machinery of debate is, and um, to see if we can't get a few like-minded MPs together and see if we can challenge the notion that certain types of culture are more worthwhile than others. Opera, ballet, apparently more important than community music making. So. I'd like to see if we can't, you know, raise a stink about that and change it. Sue was genuinely got to do some band at heart, which is nice. It's band. Well, the band in Wilbur, I'm saying. She cares. She cares for the whole banding thing, particularly our band, which is nice. I think she's quite proud of it. Working in Dinnington for the last four months, my interest and emphasis has entirely been on community bands. My worry is that the kind of Manchester United of brass bands will get the money and the sort of Cleethorpes, you know, city will, uh, will, will not. And without those breeding grounds, there is no future for brass bands. I think you're absolutely right and we need both. We also talked a lot about the community bands and how they could, um, you know, more easily get more money out of the Arts Council and put more applications in, actually, in order to get more money out of the Arts Council, because that community 
side of things is re really, really important. Because obviously, brass bands are more associated, aren't they, with Yorkshire? And, yeah, yeah, and but Nottinghamshire as opposed to London. Well, that's where the perception is, because we've still got plenty of bands in London, yeah. plenty of bands in the South West. Yeah. Wales is a big centre. Yeah, Scotland's exactly. got a lot yeah. of bands. So. And everyone turned up to watch us. You know, they heard us play, they saw us play. Look at the guy up. that were dancing to us. He was dancing to the band and it fit him fairly well, I do believe. Where else do you get to experiment with music? Where else do you get free instruments? Where else do you get free education? And new friends. But if you just encourage them, give them a bit of praise, bring them into a community where they'll be supported and they can have a laugh, their lives will be transformed, I think. I mean, if it were me, I'd just, you know, shout and scream and behave badly and say, we need money, we need it now, the kind of Bob Geldof approach. But um, I was pretty sanguine and I think... You know, good points were raised by anyone. There's a good feeling and a good sort of will to change things. So I leave happy, and I also leave having stolen some House of Commons stationery, which I'm now going to use for a series of practical jokes from some friends of mine. Have a good night. Thank you very much. I smell power. The band's London adventure is a small step in the fight for a long-term future. But back in Dinnington, with less than a week to go before the Grimethorpe gig, there's more urgent business to attend to. The band's conductor, Graham, has dropped a bombshell. On Thursday, I received Graham's letter of resignation with immediate effect. He basically emailed it to me, which anybody wants to see it, I have brought a copy of the email. It basically, it's very, very nice. It wishes us every success for the future. It says he's enjoyed the time he's spent with us. He particularly enjoyed hard draw um, and working with us and coming third, but that he feels that the band's aims are not the same as his. Um, so he feels it's in everybody's best interest to not continue. Graham Jacklin joined Dinnington before the Hard Raw contest to help make the band competitive again, something he'd achieved with his previous band. Which section are they in at the moment? They're in the second now. And what were they in when you started? Fourth. Oh, you've got form, Graham. Very good. Certainly, my ambitions were that I wanted Dinnington to be a competitive band. And certainly when, certainly when we start out on this process, that was exactly where I thought they wanted to be as well. The issue I had with the band was that I think they were trying to take themselves out of that process. I think it's for the best, actually, because I felt the same as Graham said. I think he was wanting something totally different to what the band want, and unless you're both pulling in the same direction, it's not going to work. So, uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. Graham's shock resignation means the band are conductorless on the eve of their biggest concert for years. Who could they possibly turn to for help? I'm going to ask Sue, on behalf of the band, if she will conduct at the Grimethorpe concert. Because of her nature, she's just got a brilliant way of boosting band morale, which you don't get with a lot of conductors. The band will play at their very best, I think, with Sue taking them. Let's go for Conquest of Paradise, featuring Joan. <laughs> There are only five days to go before the concert. In addition to William Tell, Sue will now have to conduct the rest of Dinnington's programme. The good news is that Sue is up for it. The bad news is that this will be her one and only rehearsal. Lots of lovely stuff there. None of it from me. No, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Oh, I know. I shall hit it on the last Not bit. Not next Saturday, it. but it'll be fine. Oh, sure it will. The big day is here, and the normally dispassionate members of Dinnington Colliery Band can't find the words to express their excitement. Apprehensions, excited. Yes, the dream come true. I'm living a dream. Seriously. Ahead of them in Sheffield, Sue prepares for her last night with the band. 
Sheffield City Hall looms in the background. And, uh, you know, lots of questions to be answered by the band today. You know, they're going to be able to hold it together, to perform as a unit, to make some great music, not to be cowed by the enormous magnitude and brilliance of Grimethorpe. But, of course, because it's Dillington, there are other questions as well, such as, will there have been a fight? Will Sally have drawn blood? Has Penny been biting again? And just how many bottles of sweet cream and liqueur will Joan have managed to have necked on the very brief trip here? The first half of the concert belongs to Grimethorpe, who've been delighting aficionados of top-class brass for decades. OK, so we're on in about ten minutes, and this is the Madonna moment. We had a little bit of rock and roll to the, uh, to the proceedings. But it remains to be seen what 2,000 paying fans will make of the band that's waiting nervously in the wings. Um, I just want to say, have a fantastic time and enjoy it. If you see my arms moving around in an unfamiliar sequence, you just two, three, four, put me on the right track, let me know how many beats there are on the bar, that'd be great. <laughs> oh, man, I could throw up. Come on, then, I'm stood about a bit now, get on. Beautiful. Come on, there, you tigers. You gods amongst men. I love you. Take care. Just four months ago, Dinnington Colliery Band was on the verge of extinction. <laughs> but guided by Sue's unflagging enthusiasm, this lot have staged a remarkable comeback. Megaphone, some kind of devil may care attitude. You can get people to come and listen to you play, you can recruit new musicians, and you can bring a smile to people's faces. It's been a far from easy ride. If they want different things, I can't change what I believe in. just run into my own fist with fury. Knowing what we've done over the years, I don't know how you're going to do it. Against all the odds, Dinnington Colliery Band is fighting fit. There's hope for the future, and Sue is leaving them on a high.
for a revitalised band and their guest conductor, there's just one final challenge. It's time to see if Dinnington can keep pace with the best in the business. Um, it's my unreserved pleasure now uh, to welcome back to the stage Grimethorpe Colliery Band. Like that more. It's just so. Just, just I loved it. Great. Yeah. They can play, can't they? Thank you. Thank you. Don't you make me cry? Now I don't do that. <clears throat> yeah, everybody. You done brilliantly. I tell you to keep up the speed I set. I thought my arm was going to fall off. <laughs> I really did. Fabulous. Oh, I made up for you. I made up for you. It was. Was it a good speed? It's a perfect speed. Thank you, Michelle. Put it on, put it on. Oh, now you say. Oh, grimy dragon. They were, and they held you back, to be honest, grimy thought. They held you back, and it's sluggish. That's where all this sweat's come from, I'm trying to drag him along. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm at 11, I think. It's just so brilliant, just enjoyed every minute of it. Really did. I think we all played brilliantly. That was 
that, that was amazing. <laughs> Dinnington Band, onwards and upwards. Onwards, onwards and upwards. You say onwards and upwards. Better late than never. <laughs>